Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through every single weapon inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see just how viable these weapons are for you to be using inside of your Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. This is going to include the aftermarket parts, the aftermarket conversion kits, as well as the MW2 weapons. So if you guys are new around here, make sure you subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you're not going to miss out any future uploads from myself on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. As well, down below in the description is where you will find the link to my streams and I stream on Mondays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I stream a ton of zombies, custom zombies and other zombie related games and I'd just be honored to have you guys come and hang out for sure. Now in today's video, before we even dive in, we need to start off with a big thank you to each and every one of you for the amazing support on the channel as we have recently crossed another milestone of 450,000 views. Absolutely astonishing. All of you are absolutely crushing it. Thank you so much. Now, BO6 is fast approaching, and my excitement level for this game is absolutely through the roof. With the absolutely astonishing support on the channel recently, I am super proud and excited to announce that we are going to be doing some BO6 giveaways. Now, Black Ops 6 give giveaways will be for Standard Edition and for Vault Edition. Now, those are going to be starting as soon as the channel starts reaching some goals I have. So the first giveaway will start when the channel reaches 3,500 subscribers. When it does, I will announce which version of Black Ops 6 we will be doing a giveaway for on the channel and the details on how to get that. So make sure you stay subscribed with the bell notifications on so you're not going to miss out on these amazing Black Ops 6 giveaways I'm able to do. Now in today's video, we're going to be going through and checking out yesterday, which is my favorite day in MW3 as they update our weekly challenges. So for this week on Wednesday, the weekly challenge that they had updated unlocks the Jack Thumper 656 aftermarket conversion kit for the RGL grenade launcher. And this aftermarket conversion kit allows for different ammo types to be put on the weapon, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, so we're going to be taking the RGL grenade launcher today with the brand new aftermarket conversion kit that released yesterday and we're going to be taking that through all three tiers taking on bounty contracts all the way through so hopefully by the end of today's video you'll have a really good feel on how the RGL when the brand new aftermarket conversion kit performs inside of your Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games and whether or not this is going to be a viable weapon for you to be using inside of your Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. Now before we dive into the review video I just wanted to find out as we are now able to unlock the rest of the DNA in this event so let me know down below uh, where you guys are and if you are finished the event and have unlocked the world ender blueprint so without further ado let's get to the RGL aftermarket conversion kit review video today All right, so welcome in. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I truly appreciate that. The support on the channel has been absolutely astonishing recently. Again, big thank you. Looking forward to reaching these goals so we can do some more giveaways for you all. Now today we're going to be spawning in and checking out the RGL with the brand new aftermarket conversion kit, Jack Thumper 656 on there. And so when we spawn in and we test our weapons inside of this series, we spawn in and put on um, all of our perks and no additions to the weapon to make it any stronger at all whatsoever. I did bring in a whole bunch of extras for today. So I have my golden armor plates, I have my ether blade, I have dead wire detonators to test with this weapon for later on, and we have mags of holding to test with this weapon for later on as well. So make sure you guys stick through the entire video to see how you feel about this RGL aftermarket conversion kit because I have a feeling like myself your opinions on this aftermarket conversion kit may change as the video goes on so here we are we grabbed our first bounty contract of the day which was a mangler inside of tier one and we are taking it on at white rarity with absolutely no additions to the weapon whatsoever what whatsoever and i could tell you right off the beginning i was starting to wonder if this video was going to be a good idea or not because this really was doing absolutely nothing i felt like i was in a pillow fight against a mangler uh, it was not working out so well, I can tell you that for sure. Holy smokes, I had to reload ammo on this thing, I think, four or five times. I will say you can just run over the ammo uh, packs that the zombies drop on the ground, and that will count for ammo. So it's not like you have to visit an ammo cache to, to refill your ammo on this, which is definitely a plus for sure. That would have been absolutely horrible if that was the only way to reload this weapon. But as you can see, it just took an absolutely long time, an absolute ton of... Uh, shots to be able to take out our bounty contract inside of tier one at this point i was not sold on this weapon at all 
I was uh, honestly kind of disappointed. I look forward to unlocking these aftermarket conversion kits, and I look forward to hopefully them being, you know, super strong inside of the game so that I can show you guys something that is going to be just truly amazing to use. And at this point, I really was not feeling it. We did finish off the bounty contract inside of Tier 1 right there. So that wasn't too bad, but it uh, definitely felt uh, like a lot of pain and a lot of ammo to be able to complete that bounty contract inside of Tier 1, especially considering the rounds that I'm using today um, were the Simtex rounds, which was interesting because they stick to the enemy, so I was definitely expecting better damage. So the next thing to do was to go off to Pack Punch, melee the Pack Punch machine so I can keep the camo and blueprint on my weapon for the rest of the run. Then it was to use the Pack Punch machine to take this RGL with the aftermarket conversion kit to Pack Punch level 1, and I was truly truly hoping at this point that this weapon would become dramatically more viable to use as uh, you saw in the first bounty our first mangler was it definitely was taking forever to do a lot of damage at all and then I have to say I was thoroughly disappointed approaching this mangler seeing the damage it was just not very good I was not impressed at all we are pack a punch only white rarity but uh, definitely wasn't seeing the damage I did get a little bit closer and managed to get a bunch more shots in a row and noticed that the damage was you know I would say average um, definitely for a pack punch bounty contract I've seen these completed much faster for sure so we were able to get that bounty contract done today which was awesome I mean it was doing okay but I was thoroughly disappointed still so it was time to throw on dead wire detonators as it just wasn't dishing out enough damage at all and to throw on my legendary tool and see what we could do inside of tier one dealing with a bounty contract at pack one legendary and this time we have dead wire detonators attached to the RGL with the aftermarket conversion kit and I had kind of big big hopes going into this bounty contract i was really hoping that this would be possibly just a one shot to this mimic and it would have been finished but uh, that was definitely not the case for sure you can see the crowd control inside of tier one is, is definitely viable with this for sure i mean obviously things are going to get absolutely destroyed so that's definitely nice to see uh, we were able to finish off our mimic bounty contract inside of tier one there at legendary with dead wire detonators and uh, it definitely wasn't much of a struggle it wasn't dishing out the damage that I, I was expecting yet so I was curious to keep it at its current damage level pack one legendary with uh, dead wire detonators and go and push into tier two but I wanted to grab a bounty contract in tier two and keep the damage output on the RGL as it stood inside of tier one when we finished off the last mimic contract so we got our mimic inside of tier two here and i tell you this mimic managed to run around and reheal because i guess i pulled him too far away from his home right there because that's where he spawned so that's his house and i pulled him away too far he managed to reheal about three times i had to go get ammo twice on this as far as the damage goes it was decent that's about all i'll say for a tier one bounty contract pack one legendary with dead wire detonators attached i was definitely expecting big things right here and i was just not seeing it um, at all just being honest with y'all i was not seeing it here's another time where the mimic turned around and booked it back to his home healing the whole way there he managed to put his health back up to just about half which was <laughs> not awesome so as you can see here i'm uh, continuing to push the fight with our mimic who continues to disappear back into his home area and reheal which is you know my bad for for not sticking in the area and keeping his uh, health bar down and letting him reheal because i had pulled him too far from his original spawn location first that's definitely something that was for sure on me but I definitely felt like the damage was very underwhelming at this point inside of Tier 1. You can see the standard HVTs inside of Tier 1 are not much of an issue at all. But I did find the, the bounty one with the extra health that this at Pack Punch 1 inside of Tier 2 was just very underwhelming. Um, it definitely, you know, it handles the crowd control. You can definitely take out your bounty contract for sure um, because of the sticky grenades they're sticking to it so it's not like you have to worry too much about um, a constant damage stream. You can shoot, you can run away and you know your, your grenade will go off but I was not impressed with the damage output of the RGL at this point. I'm just being honest with you all and I, I just didn't feel like it was going to be a viable option so it was time to push through and visit Pack-a-Punch inside of tier 2 and increase the damage output on this grenade launcher yet again and then find ourselves another mounty contract inside of tier 2 this time being Pack-a-Punch 2 
legendary and we have no ammo mod on this but i am running dead wire detonators so i was really kind of curious to see is pack two going to dramatically increase the damage output on this rgl for this mimic bounty we have inside of tier two and again i just wasn't seeing um uh, you know a lot of damage from hitting critical shots right in the mouth with the, the simtex on this mimic and we are pack two so um again i was pretty disappointed at this point i was like what is wrong am i doing something wrong do i have the wrong build do i have the wrong rounds um just was literally kind of confused at what was going on because at this point i feel like this should be dishing out a lot more damage we're a grenade launcher we've got sticky grenades inside uh, of our grenade launcher we're pack a punch two legendary and we have dead wire detonators going on i felt like this uh mimic bounty contract here inside of tier two should have taken maybe a third of the time it did for this this entire fight and uh just not impressed with the damage output for this at all um i was quite disappointed uh, uh, at this point in my match i was like what is going on also where is my reward rift i i did not get a reward rift i i've never seen that before ever let me know in the comments down below if you guys have ever completed a bounty contract in any of the tiers and not had a reward rift show up for you for completing your bounty contract very very odd for sure so now you know seeing that the damage output being underwhelming as it has been so far I was pushing into tier three. We pack a punch three, the RGL with the pack three crystal I brought in, visited the pack a punch machine and bought, um, uh, let's just say a random assortment of perks. <laughs> we'll go with that. Then it was time to venture into tier three and see how the RGL is gonna be performing inside of here with the aftermarket conversion kit. We are at max damage now at pack three, legendary. We do have dead wire detonators on. So it was time to go and grab a bounty contract inside of tier three and I was, genuinely curious to see what this would do to a bounty inside of tier three we got a mega abomination which was absolutely amazing i was super excited about that and then this happened i fired a shot and i could hear our mega abomination started eating the simtex grenade so i thought wait a minute is this going to be crazy op against the mega abominations because it's going to eat the simtex grenades if you shoot it during its laser attack we're two Simtex into this Mega Abomination. I've taken off two heads. That is our third Simtex that he's eaten inside this Mega Abomination bounty contract inside of tier three. Fires up his last laser attack and look at the damage bar that was left that we just evaporated with that one Simtex shot. Truly awesome. He dropped me a PAP three crystal. I could not believe that. Truly unbelievable. I was absolutely blown away by that. So happy to get that. I was not able to get to a reward rift today to replenish the one I brought into the match. So to see that appear out of a mega abomination was absolutely epic. Now to show you guys crowd control with this. I just, what? It took out all of those zombies. All of them with one shot. So it's got an impact explosion that happens when you shoot this which will destroy a lot of zombies and then your simtex will go off on a timed explosive and if you have dead wire detonators they will go off on the impact explosion affecting zombies in the area so this is just absolutely overpowered when it comes to crowd control inside of tier three it one thousand percent at this point i was flabbergasted this is a complete 180 from what i had seen with this weapon earlier in the match i was time to go and engage george the guardian of the arches as i was what he just evaporated like george did you know what was coming like what is going on and then i noticed like was he wanting us to do some sort of sacrifice here with the whole bunch of zombies i had no idea george just literally evaporated in front of our eyes so I figured, you know what, let's show you guys what this can do inside of tier three. Maybe George was wanting us to do a sacrifice of a bunch of zombies in order to get him to respawn into the match so we could take on our good friend, George, the guardian of the arches. But uh, as you can see, this just absolutely is crazy OP for crowd control inside of tier three. And you can imagine what this will do inside of the lower threat levels as well uh, for crowd control. So definitely, definitely something viable for sure um, for crowd control for, you know, 
uh, mimics for manglers. Um, as you've seen in the video so far, maybe not necessarily the strongest thing to be using, but for Mega Abominations, this is the Mega Abomination Eraser for sure. I was quite upset as uh, I managed to pick up scatter mines along the way, so I'd lost my decoys at this point, which really kind of upset me. But we put one shot there into that Mega Abomination. He chomped on my Simtex grenade, and I believe that took out one of his heads. And at this point, I was just like, oh my goodness, how is this against the Mega Abomination? Does he have to have his mouth open for this to be super effective? I do feel that that is definitely something that helps this for sure, is that the uh, Mega Abomination will eat the Simtex because as you can see here when I'm just firing away at the Mega Abomination um, it doesn't really do a whole ton of damage you can see it doing a little bit of damage on his health bar there with all the Simtex I'm firing at him but the real the real magic happens when he fires up his laser attack right here and you're able to get him to chomp on one of your grenades look at the damage that does to his health bar absolutely crazy it's like a third of the health with one uh, Simtex grenade that he eats. So here's the second one we fired that in. Remember, this is not a bounty contract. This is just a standard HVT. So you can take out a standard HVT inside of tier three with the RGL brand new aftermarket conversion kit with the Simtex rounds in three shots, which is absolutely amazing. That Mega Abomination dropped me a legendary tool. So I was absolutely just feeling blessed today in this run. I had replenished my pack three crystal. I had replenished my legend tool that I brought in. And of course my luck had to run out. That Mega Abomination managed to absolutely delete himself just for no apparent reason. I guess I got close to him. Um, maybe George told him what he had seen and you know, word got around through the Mega Abomination hotline. I don't know, but there was just no way to get to him in time and take him out. So again, blessed. I got a PAP 2 crystal out of that Mega Abomination. The loot today, I tell you, holy smokes, I was feeling absolutely blessed. And our ritual or sacrifice must have worked because George, the guard in the arches, had spawned back in. So I had done his bidding to create him to come back and engage and have a fight with us. And this one, I was curious to see, you know, how does it work? Uh, the RGL over here where we're in the pathway where George is only be coming from one direction. And typically, it's a bit of a struggle to get George to fire up his laser attack right here. So I was really kind of intrigued to see what kind of a damage rate we could do to George, the Guardian of the Arches, as we're in the pathway here. And he typically won't fire up his laser attack. But when he does, like, look at the damage bar. That is just awesome to see. And uh, we're continuing to fire into George. I'm hoping to get him to fire up his laser tag for me. I also need to go over and get some ammo as I was almost out of ammo on this. And that was one thing I did notice. So one downside I will say to the aftermarket conversion kit for sure is definitely the ammo. You guys are going to want to keep your eyes on your ammo count when using this. So here's George firing up another laser tag. He chokes down another... Um, Simtex grenade and that was enough to finish off George the Guardian of the Arches. Are you kidding me? The amount of damage that that uh, one Simtex did to him was truly absolutely just awesome. I was blown away at how strong this thing was. Crowd control definitely wanted to show you guys that with Magda holding again just it, it takes out absolutely everything. Just look at the crowd, the carnage that this RGL aftermarket conversion kits allows you to create inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, inside of your games, regardless of the tier and threat level you are in. My tune changed completely 180 degrees from the beginning of this video after seeing how this weapon performs against Mega Abominations inside of tier 3. For sure, I definitely would be recommending to use this if you guys are going in to do a dark ether run and uh, someone's going to be in charge of, say, crowd control. I would highly recommend you run the RGL with the aftermarket conversion kit with either the slug rounds or the Simtex rounds and bring in mags of holding and you should be able to just blast your way to crowd control and make uh, you know somewhat easy work of e a tier 3 or the dark ether for your team. As you can see here, I'm able to clear just about everything out of the Xville area without much of an issue at all all thank you so much for tuning in today just truly an awesome video this was an absolute blast to run i had so much fun today recording this it was you know i love using different types of weapons and to be able to go in with a grenade launcher and have a ton of fun and a pretty successful run is a win for me definitely got out of the match with some good loot here is the weapon i ran today the build so we're running the 40 millimeter sticker there's 40 millimeter slug rounds and there is 40 millimeter drill chargers which i have not run yet so let me know in the comments if you have tried the drill charges and the camo that i use is from the zombies mastery and it is borealis thanks so much for tuning in today and we'll catch you guys in the next one